Greetings all. I had this video recorded and then we figured out right as we're going to upload it, it had absolutely no sound, no game sound, nothing of me talking. So we're doing this again. Today I'm doing some Battle Royale Tetris and I think it's pretty self-evident what that is. I know it's not the most exciting thing, but I can't tell you how many hours I've put into Tetris as a franchise basically from the time I was small. My mom used to play Tetris on my old Game Boy Color to the point where she had to duct tape like her thumbs where your thumb kind of meets your hand so that it would put enough pressure on it so she could keep gaming and not have her hands in so much pain because she would get like repetitive motion injury but did not want to stop. So if you ever wonder like where my love of gaming Kim comes in even though I'm not really that great at it, well uh, she's one of the reasons why. So catching up with everything to do with me, I'm very sorry to those of you who want to see more Monster Hunter, especially because I don't think I was that far off from finishing the game, but I just really don't feel with it anymore. I don't feel, I don't want to say attached, it's the wrong word, but like, I feel like I just don't want to go back to it. And a couple people have said to me that if I don't feel like it, I shouldn't do it. So I don't know if I will ever finish, son of a bean bag. Okay, if I will ever finish Monster Hunter Ice. And I do apologize because I intended on making a whole go of it, but now it's just not something on my to-do list. But we are continuing on this coming week with State of Decay 2, which I know isn't a very story-based game. And we are continuing on or starting with some Monster Rancher. Now I know a lot of you might not know too much about Monster Rancher, but it is a franchise I am quite used to. I remember having the PS1 version as a kid and putting every music CD through the synthesis so that I could get any monster I wanted, except, you know, the monsters that are locked out until you reach a certain rank or whatever. And I was very into that as a kid. It was something I had fun with forever. They made a new one recently, but it's about Kaiju. And I don't know if I've told any of you this or many of you this, but I'm not really the biggest fan of like Kaiju. I'm not sure why. It's just not something that really appeals. So they have it as like a Monster Rancher versus or X um, Ultraman. And it's not something that piqued me. I was thrilled at first when I heard they had made a new Monster Rancher. I was like, oh my god, Stealth Drop Monster Rancher, and then it's like Kaiju, and I'm like, no. Because, yeah. I Recently, there have been a lot of Kaiju appearing in random media. Like, one of the... I think I said this already, but one of the Mortal Kombat movies that was animated had a kaiju battle. Like Liu Kang's animality, you know how it's a dragon. He was fighting the bad guy as a, and it was a kaiju fight. And it's just a lot of kaiju going on. And like I said, I know it's popular. I'm not shitting on people who like it. It's just not for me. So I don't know. This year has been going by kind of weird and kind of fast, but I'm old as fuck. So that comes with the territory. But like my my brothers are have been sick a while and my one older brother, he's like getting really bad sick. It's like he got worse around Wednesday and he hasn't been to the damn doctor yet. But uh, for anybody who's not in America, um, yeah, doctors are difficult because if you don't have a good job, damn. 
or you don't have a good insurance, then it costs an arm and a leg. So he's going to the doctor tomorrow, but they've been sick for weeks. And uh, like I said, it doubled down on him. So I'm worried about him. He said he's finally able to eat tonight, but you know, I think they've had the Pinini over at their house a few times. And sometimes it gets worse the more times you have it. We don't know if it is what they have, but um, that is concerning to me. And I love my brothers, but I think they kind of think they're invincible and they're not, or they just don't care. And that's dangerous. Like they're not vaccinated against the panini at all. And okay, you don't want to be vaccinated. Sure. Okay. That's kind of your choice in a weird way, but, and here's the but to all this, you could wear masks. You could, uh, you know, do all the other stuff than to at least try to mitigate the damage because it's not so much that it's a thing that kills you all right even though plenty of people have died it is considered a mass disabling event and as far as i know my brothers don't want to be in my position you know especially one he's very much against it being disabled like me so I, I'm just like, you know, it's a mass disabling event, and it's like, they're like, yeah, we're fine, our immune systems are good, and it's like, well, I can't argue so much with it after a while. And, you know, some people would just be like, oh, you're fear-mongering your, your brothers. No, I'm not. And they know my immune system is bad, so I think that they believe that part of the reason why I'm asking is for my own safety. Which, yeah, it would be nice to be able to see my brothers without worrying about what they're bringing to me, sure. But it's about them. It's about keeping them safe. So, yeah, that's that's difficult for me. You know. And it's always been a kind of difficult thing. Like, where is the line between individual freedom and watching out for your fellow human being? And, yeah, there's just a lot. But anyway... So I'm worried about my my big bro. And like I said, they think they're gonna all turn out all right, but you know, we're getting older and I'm one of the older VTubers out there in my late thirties and my brothers are in their early forties. And it's like, you know, we're not spring chickens anymore. Your body doesn't always bounce back. So I'll, I guess I'll have to see what the doctor says after he goes tomorrow. So, good thoughts, hopefully. Good, good thoughts. I blocked myself off. Um, found out that somebody I've known since childhood passed away. And he was my old bus driver. And Mr. K was very nice. And he and his wife I've known because she was my school librarian, actually. So, they've always been in my life in one form or another. And we kept up with each other even as, you know, I moved on to different schools and things. So, it's rough. I mean, he was in his 80s. They had children and grandchildren and great-grandchildren. And they're very Christian. So, they, you know, had their church and their belief in God and everything like that to see them through and I know they have a great support system but she's been his caregiver for the last I don't know how many years now because he's been you know sick uh, damn I'm not doing great on this game I'm just talking and playing oh I'm getting some stuff done the tickets give you like access to certain themes for the game so yeah so i need to send her mrs k a sympathy card and their grandson considers me a friend he's in his 30s he's got a phd he's had his name on a few big discoveries space discoveries um i'm not gonna say much more than that and he's a newlywed, but he wanted to make sure that I 
heard it from the family instead of reading it in the paper, so... Yeah, that sucks. I mean, I'm very glad he had a good long life with people who loved him. And we can only hope that we leave this life loved and cared for and having made some kind of a good difference. I mean, that's all we can ever hope for. You know, everybody wants to shoot for the moon and whatnot, and God bless you on that one, but sometimes just the simple thing of being loved and having people to miss you and being remembered for the right things, um, that's, that's what the hope is. That's what the goal can be. So, yeah, that's sad, and of course right around the holidays too. You know. But, like I said, he was in his 80s, and so I'm very glad he had all that, all those decades. I think he and his wife got married young, as they did back then, so. After a while, all you can do is hope you live the best life you could, help who you could, and just kept on kept keeping on. So, you know, I hope that when it's my time, which I hope is not for many decades, that the people who came in and out of my life, uh, most of the people I've interacted with, could say about me that I left the world better than I found it. Because that's all I really want. Is I want to, you know, leave people's lives and the world in general better than when I came along. So many people are so worried about, you know, the big, big thing. And it's like, was I a net positive in this life or not? And I think Mr. K was a positive. At least from what I can gather from everyone who knew him. Mr. K was a positive, so good on you, Mr. K. I hope I can say the same. So, yeah. I have a lot of Christmas cards to make. I might be silly and begin to do them soon and do them all by hand this year. I would like to say not, but by the same token, I... I feel, at least for now, up to the challenge of 30-some cards, individualized, and I know I'm not going to feel that way probably uh, the whole month by the time the end of this month rolls around and I have to start sending out the cards, I'm going to be like, what the fuck was I thinking here? And that will change, and then I will back down and try to send out the cards to the people who, like, I guess would enjoy them, because some people, damn, I'm not even, I'm barely getting top, top half right now. That's sad. But yeah, some people, you give them a handmade card or some jewelry or a bookmark or something personalized, and they're like, oh, you couldn't afford anything else? Or... Oh, I guess your handmade thing that you spent like a week working on for me, I guess that's okay. I guess that's a nice gift. But if you can't afford anything from a store and it's like, do you know how much handmade stuff can cost now? You know, even my cards, it's like, okay, you have the base with the envelopes. So let's just be fair and say like, a base will cost you, let's say a dollar, because it's a single base, but it's a nice base. And yeah, you can get bases that are cheaper or more expensive, depending upon. But let's just, for the sake of argument, say you have a dollar base. But then you have to add stickers and adornments and everything else. And by the time you get done with it, that card would cost you like five, six bucks. Sometimes, if you uh, want to make it nice. So that's like a $6 gift right there, base. And I know nice greeting cards can cost that, but how many nice greeting cards can you get made by hand in the store for like 
you know, that price, but that doesn't have that kind of personalized attention, you know? So sometimes you're, I don't want to say paying for the personal details, but you're actually spending more to add it and you're taking the time and the old adage, time is money, actually holds true. You know, you're doing this thing or that thing for people and you could be doing something else. You could be cleaning or cooking or, you know, spending time creating something for someone else. So when people are like, oh, you didn't, you know, your handmade card, you know, you could just, you know, didn't have time to go to the store, did you? Like, it's kind of like, fuck you, you know? I made this for you, and uh, one of the things, I'm not friends with someone anymore, and one of the main reasons I'm not friends with her anymore is because I made her something for Christmas, and I made her what I considered, it turned out fairly nice, and it was a jewelry set, and she said something about my little handmade crafts and about how I didn't have time to get her anything else or whatever, so it was okay. And it hurt me so bad. Like, I tried for you so much. Laura, no. And it was really bad. So she hurt my feelings. And uh, that and a few other things, um, I wasn't friends with her anymore. And she still wonders why we can't be friends. But that was honestly one of the reasons. And she said that she loves my handmade stuff and it's like but that's really not what you said and uh more than once that's not what you said so yeah i'm not gonna worry about it but uh i gotta tell you i only make certain things for certain people and if it's like thrown back in my face like it's a a, a gift that's basically a participation trophy you know, then they don't get another gift from me. Sometimes I don't even buy them gifts anymore. I'm just like, nope, I'm done with you. You don't want my handmade shit? Then that's that's it for you. Because here's the thing about my handmade shit. Some people, they whip out like a bunch of different handmade stuff in an afternoon. That's not me. I mean, I take a lot of time and attention like a lot of other people do, but... I actually have to put myself through pain because I have chronic pain, right? So like sitting up and the bending and all the other stuff that the positions I put myself in, giggity, for crafting and creation, I actually have to put myself through pain. I put myself through pain to give people these gifts. So it's not just the extra time and it's not just the fact that some things cost as much if not more you know i can buy bracelets out of walmart and i can get them sometimes on clearance for like just the little elastic bracelets i can get them on clearance for sometimes 25 cents i have at least one set of bracelets here that was that were literally a quarter because I stock up on um, clearance because I'm poor. So when I find clearance items for Christmas or whatever, I make sure I can get as many as I feasibly want. Because, like I said, poor and I don't go to the store that often. So a good deal is a good deal. But I gotta tell you, I cannot, in any stretch of the imagination make bracelets for a quarter so it would cost me more money to do that than just to give somebody some random off the rack creation plus I try to incorporate favorite colors stuff like that so and I know a lot of uh, crafters who've had similar experiences where people were like Oh, um, this? Like, yeah, it's okay, I guess. Or, oh, uh, you, you, if you couldn't afford anything, you should have just told me. And it's like, okay then, I know how I rate. <laughs> I mean, my stuff is not professional quality. I will admit that till I'm blue in the face. 
it's you could probably find something better you know it's just mostly elastic thread oh god i that was not me that was not me chat oh my god okay but yeah i'll probably just do one more game and then i'll call it quits i mean basically like i always do with video games it's just background while i talk and I don't know really what else to catch you up on. I got my hair chopped off. I think I told people that, but I'm not sure. Um, my hair was almost done in my butt. And I hated it. My husband would lay on it at night. I would eat it. I would like literally wake up with the shit in my mouth. And I'm like, no, definitely not. So I said to my husband, chop off my hair. And he does not cut hair for a living. But since the panini, we've all uh, had different stuff and I help cut his hair. But his is a lot easier because he just like buzzes it all off. Okay, that might not have been my best strategy, Cotton, but I'm going for it. So, yeah. He actually did a pretty good job. It's kind of to my... Uh, not to my shoulders quite, but almost... And it's pretty even, and that's all a girl can ask for. You know, something that just doesn't make you want to hide your hair when you go outside. So, I mean, I love my hair, but, you know, one of the one of the only features I like about me, to be honest, is my hair. Even though it's going gray. But I just can't stand it after a while. You know? Okay, we're gonna go up. Okay, go down, go down, go down. Please go down. Okay. There we go. Not too bad, not too bad. We're gonna try to smooth it out, but we're not probably gonna get there in time. But yeah, so I've been playing Yakuza and I'm up to four now. I would like to play it on stream someday, but with my luck. I would pull what I did with Monster Hunter and I'd be like, well, we're done with that shit. And everybody would be like, how does it end? I know you can look it up. I'm, uh, I'm not that way, but at the same time, I don't want to just all of a sudden pop out of love with something and leave everybody hanging. I'm giving everybody blue balls with this whole thing, so I don't want that to be a consistent thing I do. Where it's like, oh, I'm going to play through this. And everybody's like, okay, we're in for the ride. We'll start the car. Car is going down the highway 90 miles an hour. We're going to go to Disney World. And all of a sudden I'm like, nope. We're going to see the biggest ball of, you know, iron or something. And everybody's like, well, what the fuck, Toluca? And I'm like, I don't know. I just don't feel like Disney World anymore. And then everybody's like really upset at me. So... I mean, like I said, I don't really know how many people care. I mean, you could be like, yeah, I don't care. Like, I don't even watch you anyway most of the time. Like, why would I give a fuck? And, you know, that's fair enough. But I think a lot about, like, playing the original Resident Evil 3. Not that stupid remake, but... Because I've been watching, like, Riona play it. <laughs> or And it was a lot of fun. And Riona's a blast. If you don't know who Riona is, Riona VT. And uh, she is so super cool. And it was really funny watching her and her reactions, but it's like, I wish I could play this game and like do it. Oh shit. No, I fucked up so bad. I fucked up so bad. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. Okay. Ah, uh, yeah. Okay, we're just gonna we're just gonna call that good. And uh, thank you so much for watching. I will see you in the next one. And I'm gonna listen to that back to make sure we have audio of some things and not others. Okay, bye.